Okay, so um, we are sometimes a bit of a double act, um, although on this occasion we're wearing different coloured shirts, yes. so there is progress. Oh. Okay. Um, last year was tremendous, uh, both in the excitement level, the attendance level, and some memorable moments. For me, uh, Martha Lane Fox talking to Amy Mather, uh, uh, European Digital Girl of the Year, was a moment to remember and savour, the extraordinary passion and energy of a, of a, of a young woman. Um, who is changing the world through her skills and her belief in the power of data. But just this week, um, last week, things have been happening. And, and Tim, perhaps you can kind of just remind us that this is the, uh, the open uh, uh, data uh, charter. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, I suppose it's pretty neat for, for uh, UK to, to, to lead in things. And open data, you're in a space, open data, where UK is definitely seen as a leader. And with the open, uh, with this, with the open partnership, being uh, pulled together at all with a lot of uh, UK leadership in that. And now recently, you know, the recent news is uh, 17 countries have signed up to the charter that this OGP has produced. So, uh, so you might feel that this is sort of the, uh, the epicenter <laughs> uh, and it's good to keep uh, making waves and people will be looking to, uh, to the UK for leadership. And so, you know, solving these problems up front here, so that by the time they get them in other countries, uh, uh, they, they can look to the, those solutions, of course, is always a good idea. Uh, and of course, we, even though it's spreading to other places, it's not as though we've actually finished it at all at home. But the Open Gave Partnership is something which is effectively uh, part, of, part of the waves uh, spreading out of this and the charter. Uh, with 17 countries signing up for it, leaving uh, pressure on the others that have not signed up for it, uh, sort of mounting, is, uh, is a great uh, little bit of recent news. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, just, you'll be hearing a lot more about what the Open Data Institute is doing uh, here, uh, at home, and abroad with all of the various nodes we've got. We've got some exciting new announcements on new, new nodes around the world. This cycle of open innovation is a key uh, Gavin will be talking a little bit more about that, from uh, sharing knowledge to a network of ideas to building stuff, showcasing the best stories. That's the kind of innovation we're after. And you'll hear about our exciting startups. These are the logos of the startups we've been incubating through the Open Data Institute. Lots and lots of jobs, creative ideas, and opportunity in that range. But for me, and I think for Tim, there's something extraordinarily compelling about examples that come to us from around the world. This is the Kathmandu earthquake. Um, this is 4,000 volunteers that in 48 hours mapped 15,000 miles of roads, 110,000 uh, buildings that hadn't been mapped before, and literally built before our eyes a more complete representation of a ruined capital to help the relief effort. That is the innovative power of open data. It's why we're all passionate. It's why we believe there's both social and economic value locked in there. And as talking to Tim earlier on, let's not forget that this is also about fundamentally remembering from history where open has made a difference. The genome, what various times was going to be patented. It was for a while. The Supreme Court actually had to overturn a judgment. It destroyed value in some companies at the time who believed they had got the rights to this open data. It's now a much bigger, a much more vibrant market before, because of it. So the best examples of open data are here, around the world, and sometimes to look back a little bit uh, into history. And I think we also wanted to kind of point out to you that open data isn't done. Um, this is a fetching picture of uh, Barack Obama walking away, not because we think that the US is walking away or the UK, but remember, it is not a done deal. We have to still keep engaged with politicians and people who care about this stuff. And you'll be talking and hearing a lot today about the fact that there's a whole spectrum of data. It isn't all there is open data. It is the foundation for much we do, but we feel quite passionately there is, there is a lot to do across this, this spectrum of data, and the ODI is, is, is well-placed to have this conversation. Tim. So I suppose I, I personally have always been passionate about this spectrum uh, because as, so as a geek, I've always, at, at the personal end of the spectrum, I've always downloaded all my bank statements and turned them into RDF so I could uh, sort of deduce things from them. I, uh, I tried to sort of do my taxes with a, with a, with a few N3 rules and things. Uh, I've, uh, you know, now I've got, courtesy of something running on here, I've got a couple of years of my 
of, of all the exercise I've gotten, not to mention every single place I've been for the, uh, has been recorded. Now I've got on my laptop, and I can play with it, and I can deduce things about it. I can fill in forms for the various tax people about which countries I was in just by, uh, you know, by uh, doing anyway, all kinds of fun things from mixing data together. When you look at the ability to use data powerfully for yourself, or for that matter, as a when you to write a, as a developer to be able to write programs that other people will use for themselves, you realize that a person with, a, with all your data you need to be able to, to, be, to, you know, to be fully empowered, you've got data from all these different parts of the spectrum. Yeah, you need to have open data, and that's a, the focus of the ODI, and that's the focus of today, open data which is completely open and licensed and available and is in, in machine-readable standard format, uh, and then got your five-star data ideally even linked, uh, and at the bottom, you've got data. You know, the reason why lots of, pe lots of people have sort of heard about these experiments I do with my own data is, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you the examples because they're all my very, very personal data. This is kind of the irony of that. It's hard to share uh, experiences, and then it's hard to, you know, to get those apps to take off because people don't see them by example. You know, I'm not interested in looking over my shoulder when I do my taxes and when I look at my, sort of, when I look at my health profile. So. Uh, even though there's a lot of sharing of that sort of thing between families and between you and accountants. So sharing of the data down this end of the spectrum. And then there's, of course, when you work for a company or part of an organization, it's a really important part of that organization to have its own data, its own information. And you know, a simple example is when you look at, if you, uh, if you use a calendar application like, uh, you know, like, I, like Calendar on the Mac, you can set that up to, uh, you know, I've got, I don't know, maybe 20 different calendars I subscribe to, some of which I've got read-write access because they're, they're to do with groups. I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware of some of them I'm just subscribed to because uh, there are things which are going on. Uh, they're stored on different sorts of servers around the world. Some of them, some of it's public data, some of it's personal data. And the nice thing about the calendar application, it brings it all in. So I think in the future, we're going to see basically any application you use should have that sort of spirit. It should be running across the data spectrum. So uh, you, obviously having a, great, a very solid end of the open data, uh, of the, the open end of the spectrum uh, is valuable, is very valuable. It supports everything else. The, the fact that I uh, have uh, the, so my bike in, I've got a GPX file, uh, which is now, which is in, uh, has just gone from here over to my computer, my laptop, when it arrives on my laptop, it gets turned into a map. When it gets turned into a map, it gets turned into a map by pulling out open data, of course, from the open street map to put into the map behind it. And, that's, um, and so it's putting together a personal data and open data to make the thing actually usable. No, without either, without both, it, uh, the thing is, is useless. So that's, you can see he's passionate about this stuff, yeah. right? I mean, this is, uh, yeah. this is, this is absolutely uh, a world of the quantified self in which he lives. And, it's, I, and, and me too. I mean, I think this is absolutely the way the world is going. So the point about this spectrum, the point about our, a lot of our conversations now with businesses, with companies, with uh, government, is to explain that there's a continuum. And I often think of this as a, as a food chain, uh, an ecosystem. The foundation, the bottom of this pyramid, must be open data. It has to be open data. Everything else is generating off the back of it, feeding off the back of it. Now, we can speculate about how this food chain works and who the top-level predators are, the carnivores of the data world, but it is certainly the case that we need to understand how these various elements link together. And much of the work that the ODI do, is doing is making sense of that because the permissioning, the way the apps function, the legislation you need, the regulations that will emerge will need to be cognizant of these differences. At the bottom, though, is the foundation of open data. Without that, much of the rest could not flourish at all. Really, really important message. And that brings us on to a final point. We just wanted to emphasize the fundamental role of data as infrastructure. This work we've been doing in the last few months has really resonated. Uh, people are used to thinking about the roads and the power grid as infrastructure. It's tangible. You can see it. Uh, you invest in it. You can set up committees to kind of sustain it and maintain it as part of the critical infrastructure. Data is just because you can't see it is just like that. The registries of our legal companies, the actual GP, the, the actual postcodes, the actual administrative boundaries of our geography, where the hospitals are, what the hospitals are, who the consultants are, these are fundamental parts of our national data infrastructure. They must be open, they must be managed, 
and we must think about how we maintain and invest in them in the future. Okay. I think that's off. We've got, we said to stop at half past. I am literally being uh, <laughs> walked off the stage at this point. But look, have a great day. We are going to be around and about. There are many things happening in parallel, not least uh, an exciting uh, meeting with my French counterparts looking at the, an open data task force that the Chancellor has asked us to uh, stand up and look at how we can make the spirit of open data work, work across uh, borders really more effectively. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>